We got a comment in to the Roy on Rescue episodes okay. that we're doing that was talking about hypothermia and how that might be exaggerated by eating snow. And welcome back to iRescue Radio after how many months? Years. Pop. Years. Years. We're all old and gray now. Yep. And yeah. loving life. <laughs> You're handsome as ever, though. Hey, can't sport in that gray beard. Like, I'm not afraid. It's no. wisdom. I'm it's not like, afraid. It is I think wisdom. it's pure wisdom. It is. And that's what we're here about today. Well, the most important thing is, we all know, <laughs> don't eat the yellow snow. That's all we need to know. <laughs> First of all. He but, stole it. But, but if you're really thirsty? <laughs> no, no. Would you yeah. rather die? You don't eat I've the yellow snow. I've heard stories where people have... <laughs> Shall we move on? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Holy red dawn. Okay. So, okay. So the question came in and it said, I think you've given bad advice. This was on one of the episodes I did where we were covering what to do if you're trapped out in the elements, right? Okay. And I think that the actual context of that episode was actually... <laughs> More about what do you do if you're stuck in a snowstorm yeah. and you get stuck in the snow and you're sitting in your car. Mm -hmm. And let's say it's one of those 1970s, let's say it's one of those 2013, 2014 <laughs> snowstorms <laughs> and, yeah. and you don't have any water with you, mm -hmm. right? Right. Well, part of the thing that I was talking about is be prepared, have maybe some snacks that won't <laughs> freeze in your vehicle, like, I don't know, granola bars, blah, blah, blah. A blanket and to be aware that it doesn't take long to dehydrate and if you're gonna dehydrate you're loaded with snow everywhere snow is frozen water yeah. obviously you should not dehydrate because right. there's plenty of snow right. yeah. this person came in and said hey look I think that was bad advice everybody knows you dehydrate you know if you eat snow when you're cold it accelerates the hypothermia process right bad advice fix it so I thought I wanted to address it. Number one, I wanted to find out, was he right? So I, you know, I mean, if he's right, then I should make the correction. Right. At the same time, I wanted to make sure he was right before I made the correction, and that's when I came and talked to you guys. Yeah. And you went to Jody for sound advice, <laughs> and you came to me for the Lassie story. Oh, that's right. And I liked the Lassie story, because the Lassie story had what principle in mind? Uh, what, what your instincts tell you. Right. And what you've been told all your life to do and not do in these situations. And sometimes instincts get us into trouble. Like yeah. you were talking about the ocean. Yeah. I'm thirsty. I'm drinking salt water. Right. Which is dangerous. And deadly. Right. But, but in this scenario, you said, okay, there, there's a lot of what ifs. But, okay, if I am stranded, mm -hmm. I'm in one location. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to be rescued. Right. I'm either going to die of hypothermia. Right. I'm going to die of dehydration. Right. I'm going to die of starvation. Right. I'm going to die from the polar bear eating me. Right. <laughs> um, whatever it is, here's my choice. My choices are that one. My, yeah. My, my choices are limited. So if my choices are limited, I need to do what I can to survive. If I'm stuck and I have no water, do I say, oh, I don't want to eat the snow because I'm going to die of, de uh, of hypothermia? In that in that case. I think I'm going to eat snow. Right. Now, I'm not going to take handfuls and try to eat as many as I can at once. Jam it down your throat. Then, yes, I will be dying of hypothermia shortly. <laughs> but I need that it's water. It's some form of sustenance. Yeah. Right. Your body is asking for water, not food. Yeah. Right? Which, Would you reckon that? Yes. Which we would say is quite critical. I mean, we can live without food for 7, 14, 30 sure. days. Sure. Right? 40 right. days, 60 days. Right. How long can you go without water? Not that long. Not long. 48 days. hours, you start to show symptoms. I Absolutely. mean, it does yeah. not take long no. without water to start running into some severe electrolyte problems yep. and complications. Yeah. Which is what brought this all to a head where we started saying, okay, maybe we have some advice that will help this individual. Because in reality, my quick Google search returns showed a group of people that are outdoor enthusiasts all ganging up on the well, of course, you don't want to have eat snow. That'll only accelerate hypothermia. While on the other hand, when I checked out the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, and the National Institute for Health 
and safety, hmm. neither of those really touched on the fear of eating snow causing hypothermia. Hmm. Their problems were more dehydration, malnutrition, um, hypothermia secondary to not being warm enough, yeah. Yeah. right? Which then led me to say, to ask this question, is the problem that we're going to tip the scale into a deadly hypothermia because we ate a couple handfuls of snow? Or is the real problem that the person is already so close to a fatal state of hypothermia, it really doesn't matter? Well, doesn't it get back to our cardiac science, which is, a person that goes into cardiac arrest is dying. Right. So you're breaking ribs trying to keep the heart going. Mm -hmm. But non-broken ribs from a heart from a person that completely dies is totally dead. What's the point? You got intact right. ribs. Right. So Can you really make their condition worse. Are you, exactly right. No. So right. you're are you slowing the dying process by at least keeping water in you right. in the hope you can be found right. or whatever. And I think we came to the conclusion, didn't we, guys, that if a person is that close to being life-threatening hypothermic, mm -hmm. they've got bigger fish to fry That's right. than eating some snow. Because the fact is, they probably are going to die either from exposure right. or from dehydration or yeah, something. Correct. Well, the exposure issue, I think, is the big is the big factor. Right. Okay. If you're if you're at a stage where eating snow is going to cause your hypothermia to accelerate then you are Probably. obviously in a situation where the yes. exposure is the problem, not the eating the snow. Right. So what needs to take place is you have to figure out how do I protect myself. So if you're out in the wilderness and you're lost, you need to know how do I build a, a shelter out of this snow? Right. How do I get down where I can be able to get in a position that's like a heat escape or lessening a position that right. the heat's not going to escape more? Right. How do I protect myself? Right. Against the more? elements. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the issue more right. than eating some snow. Right. I would agree. I think that's sound right. advice. In fact, so to summarize this thing, I think we came to the conclusion that, A, the best way to survive being stranded in the wilderness is, number one, don't get stranded in the wilderness. Yeah. yeah. I, I would right? take it further. I'd say don't go in the wilderness. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan would say oh, that. He would say that. Oh, come <laughs> on. There are a lot of good things that go in the wilderness. It's a beautiful place. Secondly, if we're <laughs> going to do something extreme, yeah. like go into the wilderness. Watch a wilderness show. Watch Lassie. But secondly, be sure to pack accordingly. Yes. Have some plan Bs and plan Cs. Yes. Some redundancies. A, mm -hmm. make sure people know where you're going. That's a you got a mic chip in your that is right. That is probably one of the key elements right there. People need to know where you're going because right. if you don't show up, they're going to start looking for you. Yes. They're going to send yeah. out for help. Yeah. But if they don't know that you even went out... Right. How are they, you know, too many well, days can go past. Well, that raises the question. Do you sit there and wait? Right. If they don't know you're missing, right? how many cop shows do we have to watch to know, look, lady, if he hasn't gone for 48 hours, then we'll go looking for him. Well, that's so true. 48 hours later, he's gone. That's, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if we're going to go out to track, do we have a full tank? Do we have a full tank with back up external right. gas cans on the back so yeah. that we actually can turn our vehicle into a makeshift yeah. lean-to, right? Yeah, right? Do we have some nutrition? Keep in mind, everybody, that burning calories also helps to raise body temperature. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any calories to burn, you're also going to lower your body temp. If you're not mm -hmm. hydrated correctly, we're mm -hmm. going to have problems with circulation of oxygenated blood. We're going to fall into some shock symptoms. We're going to have metabolic problems. And it also decreases your core temperature more quickly than if you're well hydrated and you're not going to be able to think clearly. You're not going to be able to work to keep yourself warm and to survive this situation. And thirdly, as Dan alluded to, if you're out stay stuck, <laughs> stay, other than staying home, if you're out stuck, stay with your vehicle. It's a lot bigger than an individual. It's probably on a two track road where it will be more visible to search planes, helicopters, and teams who are tracking known roads, known two tracks, than if you go cross country because you think you know where shortcuts at. Remember in the in that kind of weather, it's usually overcast. It's tough to be able to tell your direction based on sunset, sunrise. And let's just face it, um, multiple minds are better than one. If you start out going out 
you're affected by the cold temperatures, you drop even a few degrees, core temp is gonna affect your mental capacity to be able to think straight and make it out alive. Hey, from iRescue Radio, we're here to help you stay alive and to live help, happy, healthy, wealthy, and watch more Duck Dynasty. I wasn't gonna say that. But yes. Get back, Jack. Not get, not box <laughs> war. Just get out in the world. Plan get out. Get out. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Every stop. I don't get eaten by bugs, by I crocodiles. I don't either. I don't get dehydrated. Dan, Dan's idea you of working. Protect yourself. Dan's idea of going out in the wilderness is working in his backyard. I know. Eighteen holes. Eighteen holes. With a car. There you go. Hey, from my rescue radio. I'm Roy. I'm Dan. I'm Joy. And we hope this helped. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.